Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and welcome to this next entry within this trading psychology series. Today, we will be focusing on something quite diabolical and that is the need to be right. The need to feel right, the need to have the right call essentially. Now, this is something again very diabolical because it it can directly it can directly just make you go against your own logical wishes your own logic the, the the best thing logically for you in a more literal sense so i'm going to start this off when, with an example um from a book i read called the millionaire fast lane uh, maybe it was a millionaire fast lane, maybe it was unscripted it was both by the same marker mj demarco really really liked the guy anyways he gives up the, this example about how he was trading stocks he's not really um, if you're looking for like stock trading uh, books this is probably not the not the book for it, but he just kind of mentions this offhand. And he gives this example of how he was looking to sell one of his stocks um, that had just gone up, uh, you know, a, a, a huge amount. And he had his sell ready. He was about to lock in, you know, however much profit, 20% or 30%, whatever it was, it was significant. And he forgot to put in the sell order. And he only found out that he didn't put in the sell order when the price had essentially had, had reverted quite a bit, perhaps even all the way back to his entry. But he was happy about it. Why? Because he was right. Because he was right. His opinion was right. Even though he lost out on money, it might, it might have even lost money, he was happy about it. Why does this happen? Well, again, we want to be consistent with our identity. And if our identity is someone who calls the market right, who is a trader, who knows what's going to happen next, then we will value being right more than making money. And this can become very destructive because when we are not consistent with, one, with our identity, we will make the wrong decisions trying to manipulate reality in order to purport us as quote unquote right. So now I'm gonna give an example of my own um, of my own uh, report over here. Let's go to the live scene really quick. Um, a very easy example, and this is a great one. So Bitcoin, uh, I'm sure that you were around in the last four or five months, but Bitcoin broke the 6,000 level at uh, in, in November. I had taken a short at about 6,300, pretty much right before the big breakdown, about a day before or the day of, and Bitcoin essentially went on a nosedive for about 50% down all the way to almost 3,000 from 6,000. Now, myself doing analysis, doing analysis and putting it out on the YouTube sphere, I definitely do have an element of wanting to be right and it's you know it's it's something that i freely admit i i, I do have that i certainly do have that i i value being right because you know in, in a more selfish sense i feel like it adds validity to my overall analysis i feel like it, it it helps validate what i'm saying but at the same time this can sometimes come into direct confluence with what my positions are and here's what happened Here's what happened. So I was holding that short from 6,300. And because price action came all the way down and broke the 200 exponential moving average on the first pass, I decided to not close it. I, I held on to it essentially. But during that time in my live streams and in my videos, I was saying we probably bounce here. We probably bounce here. So even though I was still in a short, still making money to the downside and price action ultimately went down another 30 or uh, what was it? How many percentages is this? Quite a significant amount. Yeah, about 20, almost 30% down. I was actually feeling bad because I was pretty much wrong about Bitcoin bouncing out the 200 exponential moving average, or at least not in the way that I wanted to see it. Now you do see a little bit of a bounce, so you know it's a little bit unfounded, I suppose. But I was I, I was looking for price action to be very clear and very open and honest. I was looking for price action to probably have more of a reaction around that area. I was not looking for it to just smash down through the 200 exponential. In fact, this was one of the reasons why I became a little bit more cautious in this market uh, to the downside. So even though I was making money, I literally made uh, another th almost 30% gain. I felt unhappy 
the opposite of uh, of the example that I first gave, but it's coming from the same frame, right? I wanted that validation, but I have to step back and remind myself, hey, price action is price action. The ultimate goal as a trader is to make a living. How do you make a living? You make money. You make good trading decisions. That's what I did. However, my my more, um, what's it called, uh, public opinion was false. We did not bounce at the 200 exponential. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we did not bounce at the 200 exponential. Kind of, kind of gave it a try right here. Not so much. So that to me did not feel good. Of course, I've been doing this for a long time now and I know how to sort of sidestep those emotions to get back and, and away from those more emotionally driven decisions. But a lot of the time what will happen is that people will, and what I used to do in the past, is that when my opinion was wrong, and perhaps even a position was right, but just in, in the most basic sense, if my opinion was wrong, and I'll go back to our regular scene over here, it's just more pretty. Um, <laughs> when my opinion was wrong, I would feel bad. That would put me in a bad emotional state and then I'd make bad decisions not consistent with my overall strategy that was derived from logic to begin with, I would sidestep that in favor of a more emotionally fear-driven state. Because my identity had been wrapped up in being a trader, a trader who is profitable and makes money, anything that went against that would of course make me, you know, would, would of course cause that dissonance within my own self where I didn't understand, okay, just because you didn't make a good call doesn't mean you're not a trader. What makes you a trader, it's not really anything other than the fact that you just trade to begin with, but at the most basic sense, we have to actually realize that there's no real such thing as being a trader. You do trading. You do trading. You can't be something. You can't be anything more than you already are. And what you already are is just, well, likely a human being. <laughs> no matter what gender you are, no matter what what you identify yourself as, you're probably a human being if you're tuning into content like this. And that's all that it can be from your own, at least from my own interpretation of myself as far as identity goes. So when I started to shift my, my, my identity into just being a human being who does trading, it no longer conflicted when my opinion was wrong, but my technical analysis was right. And this is what I mean when I say, I don't trade my opinion. I don't care what my opinion is. My opinion's wrong all the time, and that's okay. If I trade technical analysis, I don't need to have a good opinion. I can take good risk reward setups, and I have that soothing fact. I have that soothing fact that over time, I will be successful. You know, of course, uh, granted that your edge is viable, but uh, again, I'm going to make the I'm going to take liberties in in um in, in assuming that you do have that already down uh, whether that whether that you you took uh, one of my uh one of my technical analysis programs or you learned it somewhere else on your own or or whatever it might be you have that part down after that the emotional game is this is this accepting that fact that that does not you know taking a loss not being right what wherever that stems from does not coincide does not does not conflict with who you are who you are, just a human. What you do is trading, which you're trading. You know, it's you're not you're not in conflict with that. You might be right, you might be wrong, but that doesn't take away from your identity. Is my point. And so once you separate those two things, you no longer have the, this conflicting inner war going on of cognitive dissonance, where you're thinking to yourself, "Okay, if I don't get this one right, I uh, I, I I have some sort of like an ego death, which is not the." emotional psychological state you want to be coming from remember we want to be as relaxed as possible relaxation is the goal relaxation is the name of the game because when you're relaxed you're going to be in that logical mindset my uh, mindset where you are interpreting reality for what it is in the most basic sense in the most literal sense really which is a truth and you can let that be a very soothing factor of this game rather than being rung up and and caught up in this in this falsehood in an impossible game as well to always be right it can't be done it cannot be done like i said i've been around the best of the best traders in the world not everyone's right all the time and what separates the professionals from a retailer is the acceptance of that fact but knowing that over time with that with whatever edge that you do have that's what's going to make you successful so that's going to do it for this video again another very deep topic 
going into going into our actual identities. And I hope this one finds you well. It might need it might need to be viewed a few times. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.